Tom, you're talking and we can't hear you. Happy Friday. Oh, sick oh, bird. Mute. Yeah, I muted myself because there was a truck driving by just beeping. I was like, of course it does to start an episode. <laughs> well, I'm Tom Aaron, VP of Marketing, and I'm joined by my team, Lynn and Daniel. Welcome okay. back. Good. Is everybody all ready for Halloween? More or less. We have ready some enough. candy left. From last year? <laughs> You're giving me away last year's candy? <laughs> We're still working it off. We have not we have bought all the any stuff candy. <laughs> you, you already filtered out the candy that your kids have gotten. No, they've give, away, give away the stuff they didn't want. We have a bag of, uh, uh, oh, what are those little, little malt balls? Whoppers? Whoppers. Whoppers. We have a whole grocery bag of Whoppers. <laughs> Do you not like them? No. Do you want my address? Yes. <laughs> I'll ship you some. Yeah, Whoppers and Rolos we have left. Oh, how do you not like those? Do you guys have thrifty, like thrifty ice cream? No. no. Um, it must be a Southern California thing. But I think it is. They have a chocolate malted crunch ice cream, which is basically little Whopper balls and chocolate ice cream. And it's the best ice cream in the history of the world. Oh, man. <laughs> so what's, what's <laughs> funny is, Tom, you know, my dad's from out around LA. And growing up, like I would argue one of his top three candies was always Whoppers. Yeah. So I wonder if that's Southern California delicacy of sorts. It gets into the whole red vines versus Twizzler debate, East Coast and West Coast. Oh, which, which coast likes which? which? Yeah. Uh, Twizzlers, as I understand, are East Coast because they're terrible, <laughs> and red vines are delicious and from the West Coast. Interesting. We have both here, but my parents only ever bought Twizzlers, but we're from the East Coast, so that tracks. I'm in Oklahoma, and I think I'd eat whichever is in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that They're red. Dead They're sugar. Center in the country, yeah. so it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take both. So I will say, that... I the texture of red vines is easier to eat, for it's sure. Softer, it's a little right? more enjoyable. Yeah. Twizzlers, if they get if they get old or like if they get cold yeah. at all, they're gonna break a tooth. Like wax. Yeah. Red vines are like wax. Twizzlers are like plastic. Like, yeah, that's a good way. It's, yeah, it's like eating a real candle versus eating a fake candle is what you're saying. Yeah, or eating. Which we're candy. all experienced. <laughs> I mean, it's like. Uh, are you revealing personal secrets? Dan? Yeah, I like eating candles, guys. Everybody knows that. <laughs> it's like when I used to have braces, I had to put the wax on my yeah. Oh, oh, often you kind of clump up and you just kind of chew it like gum. Uh, I don't know that anybody else did that. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember the wax though. Nice. All right, so today we thought we'd uh, do a, an episode um, where we just have some fun and some funnel fun. So, you know, being customer acquisition show, we wanted to go through a few different brands that we've noticed and look at their ad library, which is often the first touch with a brand and a potential customer and go through their ad library, see what we like, don't like, and then take that down through the funnel, um, make some suggestions, call out some wins and hopefully argue a little bit. Not us. Not us. All right. So. Should we have any rules here or just kind of go for <clears throat> go for it? I don't even know what rules we would have. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I guess to, to be call out, we're not, none of these have been sponsored. Like they're not sponsoring us. They're not clients. Like these are just stuff we love. So yeah. And leave it. we're all fairly unfamiliar with each other's choices. That's I'd like, true. I'd like to say that's by choice. Like we yeah. plan that. Although I would happily yeah. be sponsored by either of mine. Yeah, same. Send send me a free device. I'm here for it. <laughs> All um, for free stuff. But we are not currently sponsored. Yeah. Cool. All right. So Daniel, you're you're driving the uh, screen. Yeah. Let's. So I'll let you pick which one we start with. Let me find my window. What are we on? Uh, Vitruvian. That was one of yours. Why don't we just start there? Yeah, one of mine. Uh, this is. A device I've seen quite a bit, mostly in my uh, feed, and it is an electromagnetic weightlifting machine. Uh, the name is catchy with the like Vitruvian man kind of thing. 
Yeah. That's yeah, they're cool. definitely playing in this same space of like um Peloton, Total. or rowers, like at home fitness that doesn't take up yeah. much space and uses technology in a way where they can charge you month over month. Right. So it is like you could do their workouts, but you pay a subscription mm. to yeah. get it sort of thing. And this is a hard space. As you said, there are a lot of competitors that have been around for a long time a lot of options so how are yeah. they doing other with differentiation standing out and they're creative um well let's go back to the ad library daniel and kind of go through it a little bit i hope you can, can you zoom in let's see I, I can open some ads that might be the easier way digital weight packs a like punch some... hopefully you all can hear it ugc a little bit I think they're at this point mostly UGC. That's what it looked like. Which is kind of, I think, a smart move in this space when you have, I think, Tonal is maybe their biggest competitor. Yeah. Especially if you have people, like, oftentimes these these companies have used people who were essentially fitness models or models, which made it hard to be believable. So using real people who have gotten fit or stay fit using their product would be a win. Yeah, they're definitely big. Like their influencers tend to be heavier in the CrossFit niche. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, they also have quite a few of uh, like fitness models. Mm -hmm. Like there's definitely two different audiences there kind of the um, younger female fitness model and then the hardcore lifter getting into the CrossFit and power lifter. Mm -hmm. But both of those, yeah, would would invest in would invest, and you know, I guess does it work? It looks like they're like, oh wow, it works. I think it's one of the hardest things for them is showing that it works. Yeah, because there is no way to demonstrate how much weight is actually being lifted. Like if you were to have barbells, or uh, you'd be able to see how much weight is loaded on the barbell, right? Here you can still see people struggling, but it's like, are they real? Are they acting? I, right. I don't right. I don't know how to get around that. So the influencers would help, like them, yeah. you know, that community's trust to say, oh wow, I can really feel this. This um because there's a lot of a recept, at least my perception is that like cables and stuff like that just isn't as good of a workout. Like, and that this at home stuff is for people who don't work out. You know, that whole concept of you buy it and it stays in the corner, you know, and it's a coat rack. So it's smart. I think the one thing they do well, though, is showing like just jacked people struggling. Yeah, like your, you your point, you can't really show it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like when you see somebody in a CrossFit gym, like clearly they work out. Right. So this isn't for beginners. So their ICP smartly is not their ICP. Their, their ideal avatar is not beginners. Right. They're talking about insane workouts. They're they're featuring very fit people. Um, yeah. Can you do, do the guy at the red shoes? Right here? Yeah. Where can I get this? It's, oh, yeah, you had it. All right. So this is, I think, a former CrossFit Games winner and pretty well known in CrossFit. I mean, he looks like he's struggling. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, oh. <laughs> but that shows the safety though, right? Like you don't have yeah. to have weights dropping on you. You can literally just get out of it and let go. Right. And I like their, yep. their copy to go along with it. Athlete the defeated. The stronger you are, the more force you receive. Cause I, I suspect for some of their ICP, there's always this question of like how much weight does it put on me? Right. Can I actually um, handle my strength and where I'm at at my fitness yeah. journey? And but I, I do like think they, they do a good job of showing a mix of people in their ads and probably on their site. Yeah. Daniel, if you click through a link on one of those ads, what happens? Let's see. Learn more. Ah, so it's homepage, so it's not Same like a targeted, yeah. segmented page. Ooh. That would have been, uh, that would be, I think, 
a win for them if they could do that, like narrow it down to their different avatars, maybe even feature some of these influencers that are in their ads, just to have that congruence. Is that red? Um, is that red shoe do? Yeah, red shoe yeah. do. <laughs> red shoe do. That's him. Yeah. 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 What saying. yeah. yeah so. But it's yeah, not the top. If they could have built a page around him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even just featuring him at the top. Yeah, I mean, that's probably two different landing pages, right? There's the Sam Dancer influencer page and then the yeah. hardcore male CrossFit landing page. Yeah. And really, if they've done their ICP research well enough, they should know what the main questions people in that niche have for them. Yeah. Yeah. Just and they could go right to, uh, you know, learn more or purchase or something or whatever the initial offer is, get the app or something, have questions and proof and, and all the offerings down the page below the above the full call to action, you know, being tailored to that avatar. Yeah. Ooh, potentially a third avatar here with like the small business owner. Yeah. Create your own gym. It would be cool for like business gyms and things like that. Yeah. I want to get one for my business gym. Okay. How? <laughs> <laughs> Tier 11 satellite gym, you know? Yeah. Why not? Why not? This is interesting, though. I mean, the one big difference that I see is their platform is based on being on the floor. A lot of these other ones, like Tonal or, you know, what a Lululemon has their mirror one. Mirror, yeah. You know, they're, they're all wall mounted. So you're working off of a wall. So this one's interesting because while those have to be mounted to a wall somewhere, this one seems more portable, shove it under the bed, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do. And honestly, that's more appealing to me than something mounted on the wall. Yeah. Well, and if you consider that more and more, I'm going to speak for millennials here, more and more millennials are renting. Yeah. Right. Um, you can't always put something on the wall, especially not something that's going to be weight bearing or is just that heavy. Um, you just can't do it. So having something on the floor means you can take it with you. It means you're not going to you know, mess anything up. Um, I, I find it interesting that they do have all these different avatars that could potentially be explored with advertising and outreach. Look like even some B2B there. So this is an interesting choice, Tom. Yeah. They have a lot of potential. <laughs> Sorry. I just have a dude grunting behind you talking. <laughs> Well, we can't hear the grunting. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you have to unmute that. Can you hear that? I, I was watching the muscles moving. Okay. So yeah. I, I don't. I don't care about the grunting. But muscles. I I was intrigued because this one, you know, we were talking about how you could tuck it away under a bed or something, but this is the yeah. first one I've seen that mentions anything close to that, like make space for our digital gym. Just over one meter is enough to store four hundred forty pounds. So. Yeah. A lot of short form copy with these guys. Hmm. So these are all like mostly all UGC. We're assuming that these are probably a little bit more in the can, people are already aware phase. You think? Yeah, I would assume so. The, it, yeah, most of it's to a UGC. sophisticated audience. Yeah, yeah. A month. So here's a bit more like that YouTube influencer fitness model style the heavier end of a fitness model in terms of muscle development but yeah yeah i think i'd like to see i do like the the, the specifics of the money and whatnot although purchase with a firm you've got to have really good credit for them so that's not as great of a draw as it sounds um it'd be cool to see like people tucking it away like infomercials used to do that right like it'll yeah it'll talk, it'll talk it's still like it'll still work if you put it on its side and put it in a closet like i'd like to see some of that and hitting different that, right? hooks interesting um marketing strategy shoot an infomercial for it like legit old school is it yeah really blank put it on the landing page little tony yeah. gazelle action yeah and you, and you could test it even like buying cheap ad space on local in local markets potentially but really mm -hmm. you know set you know 
uh, over the top kind of Hulu advertising, but just use that as Ooh, yeah. a long form oh, ad. Right. Yeah. This is probably the first one. I mean, this could still very well be UGC and just somebody who has a little more production value, but this is the first one I've seen that isn't full on UGC. Mm -hmm. It's also longer copy. I think there's probably an interesting thing also for them being kind of on the tail end. I mean, past COVID really, but on the tail end of at home fitness of talking about how they're here for the long run and really because it does require internet connection and servers to use, like build the confidence that if you're going to drop whatever it is, like 2,500 bucks on this, it is going to be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. cool. All right. Any other thoughts on this? So we say good use of UGC, potentially some other more narrow advertising for specific problems. And then yeah. landing pages and product pages landing yeah. yeah the one the one thing i would say is they've got a lot of ugc but there's not much let's see is this one not the same uh, UGC. this this one's the first one that i've really noticed where it's somebody talking about it versus demonstrating um so you know you have a lot of good demonstration ugc content but not a lot of like speaking testimonial type content coming from creators you obviously get like sound bites here and there where you know they're struggling to lift and they're like oh man that sucked or whatever it might be um but you don't have a lot speaking to the product the company so i don't mm -hmm. know if that in this market is as important as it might be with something you know like uh all natural cleaning solution or you know whatever it might be where that you have a lot of reasons why you might be choosing something uh, whether that be like, you know, health or, you know, if you have kids in the house or something. Right. Um, but it, it seems like though. they have they have a, a ton of UGC and not a lot of anything else. Yeah. Because to the point ad. earlier, I think seeing stuff like it getting tucked under a bed or. Mm -hmm. Or even a full workout. workout. Yeah. Like, can I we think... see like all the different exercises you can do like in a rapid succession as opposed to 40 seconds of the same lift? Yeah. Like, and there's not much you know, showing a full workout, there's not much here that mentions anything about it being a subscription service. There was just the one where, you know, where you pay for, uh, you know, however oh. much a month to get access to it. But they have classes and all that, but you don't see any of that here. I feel like this is one of those cases where they heard UGC works and then they just did UGC. Yeah. Which fair enough. Yeah. But would you say that is misleading at all? What do you mean? Because oh, they don't, I mean, you, you don't mention it. Yeah. So trainer plus let's go in here real quick. Cause you may be thinking like, great, I'm just getting out or getting a product that I can work out on and tuck away when I'm done. And I'm sure maybe you can work out on it without having to take, you know, their classes or whatever, but there should probably be a, a UGC or some kind of ad that actually explains how it works. Maybe a retargeting ad yeah. right, that, that kind of addresses some of those maybe questions go to the app or objections. Or go to yeah. that. Maybe it's app. Yeah. So the fact that we can't tell in a minute, you know, is an issue. Well, and I think it's more the question of like, there are competitors, you know, so I have an, a, a small understanding of how some of the competitors stuff works. So I want to know how this compares to that. So do I have to pay to get access to workouts or oh, wait, 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 they have, they have people like trainers that are for these people that we're supposed to know, they should be featured in ads. Expert coaching. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like Peloton. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know they have instructors and stuff. I don't know that these are anybody. No offense to these people. <laughs> well, I think this is also they're good. just they're coaches, you know. If we're doing like ICP specific landing pages, you'd want to have ICP specific workouts that are showcased there. I think yeah. one, probably one of the bigger 
you know, things going into it for a CrossFit, like, can I do CrossFit workouts here? Do you, exactly. right. Or if I go to a bodybuilding landing page, do, will you help me build specific, uh, give me specific plans for optimizing certain parts of the body to build? Right. right. Cause they definitely have all the science behind the different training methodologies for achieving the goals, but I don't think they, it, it's too much, to too many different people and not narrowed in for specific workout methodologies. Yeah. Agreed. Cool. Oof. Only, th only 3000. You get three months all access. Oh, that, that, that makes it worth it. What do you think? Like, I don't mean to stay on this one forever. What would life cycle marketing look like here after somebody's bought? That's a good question. Um, yeah. I mean, it'd be community membership. I mean, if it's working and the exercises are good and there's community and people keep paying, um, it'd probably be more accessories. The thing is, like, you look at the accessories they sell here. I would be curious how you're how you're proving the value of this versus I'm going to go up. I'm going to spend the three grand just for this. I'm not going to pay 300 for whatever you're trying to charge me. I'm going to go on Amazon and just hmm. see what I can find. You know what I mean? They so connectors. Oh, do they? Yeah, Probably. they do. Interesting. Phone I still feel like I could make it work. <laughs> I would I would rig something up and then probably have a lawsuit on my hands. Knowing me. Not me and them, but me and whoever wanted to try my machine. And probably there's probably some um, competitions maybe you can build into the yeah calendar yeah. i mean like you could even buy lifetime access so let's say i go in here i pay for everything i get the pro kit i get the product i get the phone stand i buy lifetime access you're gonna what maybe five thousand right max what a, what am i gonna be sold value. later on at that point right I mean, that might be the the lifetime, the max lifetime value at this point. Could be. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's the business, right? Yeah, there's partnership opportunities with, you know, workout drinks and proteins potentially. Or mm -hmm. I'm not sure creating their own nutrition. Brand. They could offer nutrition coaching. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right, Lynn or me, whichever one. Here, we'll we'll start at the the front of the tabs. <laughs> there we the, go. This one was mine. If you can't tell, I'm slightly congested right now. So this actually stemmed from a conversation with my wife of me recalling a product that is a nasal inhaler, uh, and I couldn't remember the name, but I knew it existed because I had been served ads. So this is Boom Boom Naturals. And their whole thing is it's just like an essential oil nasal inhaler that's supposed to clear up sinuses. Um, but they also boast, you know, it helps improve focus and a few other things. The one thing that Lynn and I were looking at this earlier that we found interesting, or I probably found it more interesting because I remember getting served ads, is that they don't have much in their ads library right now. Yeah. It's launched in August. So... Yeah. You know, they've been going two months according to this, but I was telling Lynn, I'm pretty sure I was served ads by them a year or so ago. They've been around since 2008. So 2008. And then uh, I think 2017 was like one of their big first launches of a product and they were on Shark Tank and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, I expected more ads out of this. So I don't know. I tried digging around a little and didn't find more, but they also lean heavily into UGC. The one thing that's interesting mm -hmm. about their UGC is it's like man on the street interview type UGC. So they're just walking around, you know, 
shopping malls or whatever it might be. I see a UCLA sign. They're out in west of LA. I um, think like out past Calabasas or something. Mm. Um, but this is kind of their style is made on the street interviews. They got it's their authentic, kind of like, really yeah. authentic. So can you guys hear audio? No. Mm -mm. Her face, that's amazing. I like the total uh, Gen Z microphone. Gen Z yeah, the, uh, the, the tiny mic. Yeah. <laughs> the little lovelier so you, mic here. So that's that's their style though, is you know, they just go around talking to people. They've got some mashups. I wonder if that's their avatar. That's what it appears to be, but Tom, you might be able to answer this. Is this UCLA's campus? It looks like it. That's the what other, I was curious about. The other girl had a UC Irvine shirt on. Okay, there's UCLA the banners. Interesting. So <laughs> that's a good freeze frame. <laughs> Sorry, amazing. Perfect uh, freeze frame. So yeah, this this is interesting to me because. Ooh, that's weird. Oh my, like it's it going like in your that. nose, but it tastes like. Well, so they're flavored, which right. confuses me because I'm pretty sure they're like heavy on like menthol, eucalyptus. Right. But you know, like it's it's interesting where they're flavors. Waterman. Like they have a tropical one, and the idea of menthol and tropical in the same like scent or taste weirds me out. Well, but, surely there isn't menthol in the tropical one. That one's more I don't citrus. Know to wake you up citrus can help with i want to say can help with like memory and attention <coughs> whereas the the menthols you know just like like vix vapor rub and we were talking about this daniel like vix vapor rub you know as long as you're not like having it like stick to your mucous membranes smelling it that close is great um but yeah vix is kind of like old lady right, right? you think of like grandma stuff you know, the Vicks that's been in your grandma's cabinet for 20 years and you're not even sure like you should put it on your skin, but you're going to anyway because grandma's going to do, do it. it. <laughs> you have to. Um, I don't know, yeah, that was a tangent, but like interesting that they're trying to take the same concept. And I mean, it's a similar product to what you said other other brands are doing or offering, but making it more you know, younger yeah. and fresh and that's that's the thing is we were talking you know vix has this you can get off-brand versions of this at walgreens or cvs vix has their i think it's called like vapo inhaler is their version and you know it's standard vix menthol but it looks ex exactly like this product just a little stick you put at the tip of your nose inhale clears you up but yeah boom boom definitely leans heavily at least from what we could see here into Gen Z, younger millennial sort down. of style. Mm -hmm. And that's the yeah, end it of it. Yeah, it looks even the, the people that they use. Yeah. So so it's very interesting. You know, they uh, Wagmans, is that a store out there, Tom? No, I think it's in the South. Interesting. But yes, yeah, there's a point I was going to make is because they're split between retail and online, they probably could do a, quite a bit more like brand advertising, yeah. brand activation. But here's the thing is I, as I was saying, I remembered them. I didn't quite remember the name, but I remembered the look. I knew it. Like once I saw it on a, in a search, I just Googled, you know, like nasal inhaler. Once I saw the image pop up, I was like, that was the one. <laughs> and started clicking through because I remembered it from however long ago it was. I know it wasn't two months ago. Um, so I don't know. They've, they've done some stuff before and I could not find it, which was interesting to me. Um, so they must have had some kind of ad library shakeup. But this is the mental okay. space, what they call that mental inventory. They were yeah. sitting in your mental inventory. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're one of those products to that point. Like, I'm not going to think about them until my nose is clogged up. And like, right. There was something that I could stick up my nose that would clear this out, right? And just start Googling. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting one. And then, you know, you get to their page and it's kind of 
typical. Let's see. I'll cl I'll click through. All so back to this ad real quick. You know, if you're sending somebody to a store like this, you really want to show them the product in a way that will stick in their head when they're looking for it in the store. Yeah. Like right now, that's true. like I would have a hard time going to recognize this inside of Wegman. This doesn't look like. That's like anything. the inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is what you need to see. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point. Let me click through one of these ads up here. See where it takes us. Okay. So this okay. takes us to a product page. Nasal Automatically stick. to that a is... variety pack. Ugh. You don't I love the name. probably the one with the highest cart value. Right. I would assume so. Yeah. I would prime. So you could either get it. Yeah. I mean, that. you get a three pack of one flavor for 20 or a four pack for 25. Mm -hmm. Buy with Prime. I did click through around this. I've actually got it open. It's the same, same, same price, same shipping, and you can get free shipping through their site. So I found that interesting because I think a lot of people's natural tendency is they would go here and be like, let me see if I can find that on Amazon, find it somewhere cheaper, find a good deal. I wonder why they aren't discounting it just slightly on their site to incentivize direct orders. Yeah. Usually you want direct orders because you're going to make more money. So right. I wonder if there's a specific play why they would price match. Yeah, because if, yeah. if I have if Prime, Amazon, it's getting here tomorrow. Hmm. And I, I would assume because I, I added it to cart and stuff and went through and looked and you could pay $8 sh shipping fees to uh, get like three day shipping from the site. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to go to prime. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a move on their part that they want it to go through Amazon. I don't know probably. why, but reviews probably. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally an Amazon product. This is a hard product to buy e-commerce. It's yeah. just not expensive enough. It's probably too much work for them to, you know, pick and pack and ship. That could be. Um, yeah. Does it do? Oh, it can't make interesting. But their no, site Dan... isn't bad. Interesting. You were saying that they, at some point, were listing what it didn't contain that other yeah. products had. I think see. that would have been a useful ad. I wonder if it was in their blog. Yeah, I had found it. And uh, yeah, long story short, I came across uh, what I think was a blog post from them. And it was kind of just all about nasal inhalers, uh, or as Lynn likes to call them, nasal sticks. <laughs> that's the, that's the product. I know. Um, <laughs> I don't like to call it that. I know you don't. <laughs> um, but it was, it was all about, you know, like, they're basically like, Oh, maybe it was this one. Which ones to avoid? Oh, okay. um, what they are, how you use them, the benefits, all that. Mm -hmm. But there was a section on here that was, yeah, this, this is one, like an advertorial. Avoid, avoid nasal inhalers with these ingredients. And I thought that was really interesting because I agree. I think that's the sort of stuff that I would just assume you'd want to create ads all about yeah. this. But, you know, it talks about like I there are, there are other great products like they're, admitting they're not unique in the sense of they have competitors but they're talking about indirectly you know like but here's what to look out for in our competitors products you know if you go look at the ingredients if you see these here's the stuff that you might experience mm -hmm. so it, you know it shows them exactly yeah. what to look for which is great oh they should probably go the adver actual advertorial route and either have a you know that branded site that isn't a real site except to basically push your product advertorial play or actually get this on a yeah. you know, display network somewhere because what well, works on your site it works better when it's not on your site um given it's an advertorial right this but they could have like oh sorry Good. i was gonna say they could have like a bunch of gen z and millennials like sitting around a table comparing and talking about ingredients and I don't know, like how you could do it, but there's ways to still present this info and be fun. 
um, there's a lot of information that they've there's gathered. There's a lot of uh, music festival information, apparently. I was just about to say they've got 13 pages of blogs. Interesting. Yeah, whatever. So, you know, that's one thing we've talked about quite a bit lately is pushing traffic to blog posts and how you, how you can leverage that in your advertising, which I mean, they've got the content. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something they could be doing. I mean, like anything about allergies. I mean, you talk about like the, uh, like geo targeting you could get like regional stuff, like around Oklahoma and like, hit me with those ads. You could target me easily during allergy season <laughs> and, and drive me to a post. Like I, I probably going to read this when we're done here just cause I'm curious about it. So I, I think there's a lot of missed opportunity there, but again, the one thing I'm intrigued by is how little is in here, mm -hmm. their ad library. So yeah. You know, the one thing we haven't talked about too much is, I'm going to uh, drop a link to their Google uh, ad library. Ah, good call is the cohesiveness of ads, but their ad copy is a uh, little minimal. Get yours today. It's very minimal. And <laughs> that's, that's gotta be retargeting though. Right? Yeah. Here's, here's a different one. Breathe happy. Breathe happy. Boom, boom. Supports nasal breathing over 5,000 five-star reviews. This one looks like it would be their Instagram bio yeah but i mean it tells me what i what i need to know in a very uh succinct way they've got one for each of their their products mm -hmm. then i'm assuming it's just goes to home page oh, and, they're, and they're, page. they're not running any google ads to their those blog posts which seems like they're only playing seo trying to get people to click on it for shopping gifts for under for or Christmas gifts for 2023. Right. Interesting. And potentially try, especially things that are more specific, like the allergies. Yeah. If you're a blog post, you may as well run some you know, low intent traffic to it. But this is good to see too, is that it's not all about, you know, nasal congestion per se. They've got, you know, this blog post was the second one on there seasonal affective disorder and you know it gets into boosting moods and all that which is something they they talk about on their product and it's not all just about their product too which is good very value first yeah mm -hmm. knowing what the avatar wants and needs outside of just the buy this where is there this one doesn't even list their product, does it? There. Oh, it does. Yeah. Once. On the days when natural sunlight isn't an option, this will awaken your senses and boost your mood. And that's it. They should do so a... a Go ahead. I was just saying, that's interesting that they, they've got a pretty lengthy blog post here with one very subtle mention of their product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it'd be fun for them to do an april fool's thing where there's a typo in the product development and instead of a nasal stick it was a navel stick <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be an interesting one i'd love to see the comments on that so yeah that, that was mine i i don't know that there's anything they're necessarily doing wrong i think they're doing a lot of things right um I agree in a lot of their advertising, even some of these pictures, like, yes, it demonstrates the small size of the product, but, you know, it's not really memorable. Yeah, I'm not convinced yet. That's, they, this is the biggest photo, really. Mm -hmm. What's a boom boom? <laughs> What's boom boom? Is this the same for your homepage? Almost. I love this 1990s like style <laughs> picture here down to the pigtails. The uh, group photo. Yeah. 
early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like lots of opportunity. Obviously, they're doing things. Oh, I don't like that one. Right. This one? With it's the, a weird. the white lines coming off it makes it look like something else. Yes. Agreed. Here's yeah. one thing I'm curious about. What's their YouTube look like? They don't have that video on anywhere. Well, that's that's why I was curious because you know this. How does it work? And that it says it. Air yeah. right. as thick as you inhale, and it's like okay. It's, there's an opportunity. Like, just run that for video views. Make yeah. make this a video. The whole background, like you clearly shot a photo on a lavender background or actually looking at this it's not a lavender background that's cut out um but just shoot a video on a solid background of somebody inhaling like that's a really easy yeah when they have it in this video that was it right there mm -hmm. that shot right yeah. there should considering go how right here. video heavy they are on facebook it's surprising that they don't utilize a lot of video on their website oh look at it the more that they could be using in ads so i guess oh, it's these are reviews yeah, yeah cool that they're using them on their youtube shark tank from four years ago mm -hmm. frequently asked I mean, questions there's a youtube trick if those live on somebody else's youtube channel you can run those yeah. ads yourself as ads for yourself all the shorts same sort of style interesting decent views right uh yeah some of them i mean this one's 56 but then four thousand ten thousand 10,000 ads. It's huh? my guess. 10,028. That's all UCLA. <laughs> hmm. Glad oh, you know that. I've never been on that campus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a nice campus. I, sometimes before the pandemic, I would work out of the library there because it's nice and quiet and made me feel young or old. Both. Nice. <laughs> so, Daniel, are you buying extra tough ankle deck boots? <laughs> oh yeah the amazon yeah they're amazing i need some good rain boots but also because i'm obviously going deep sea fishing sometime soon no they're so cool just to like put on and go do some outside work and come back in yeah, like, yeah. and they're not full-on <laughs> rain boots so they're not yeah. annoying anyway what's next yeah. let's see got a lot Lynn. of tabs open now yep lens Nude. I was served an ad by them. Um, because clearly they know I'm a I'm a hairy Italian German descendant, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got served ads and uh it was of this woman in yeah, like Danny, we were talking about this in construction gear with like wand scaping, and she was like, This is my bush, and she's like trimming this bush talking about and of course it's a way to get around talking about this hair removal device where is it um but it was I, so I catchy it. i'm like i love this i'm going to save this for when i'm ready to buy a device and i want to do more there research and i've been served ads i'm on their email list and they're just fun they yeah oh my god they're so great i love them um all of the copy is good there was still nothing Oh, it's great. There's an I've seen another one too, but yeah, they've done this hook. <laughs> this is like total like Harmon Brothers style ads. Yeah. D. Harry, your topiary is amazing. <laughs> oh, well, so many of these. It's this, amazing. We, we won't even talk about it, but just like if you could see the imagery. Oh, but, uh, they use it a lot. Oh, of and days. then there was the the bearded sausage. Fruit. Yeah, the peach fuzz, the the peach. Yeah, oh, all the places sure. that you can you can use it. And it started by by a man who wanted to get rid of hair on his shoulders. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, but this yeah, thing, this is a hard this is a hard thing to advertise. You've got a medical device that potentially has FDA compliance issues. I, don't, I mean, they don't have issues, but you have to be careful about the language because it's a, 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 like a, a health and beauty device. 
<laughs> that's like totally like topical with Barbie movie coming out, like leaning into trends. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they need to demonstrate without demonstrating. Like they, I just think that they've just done such a great job, and yeah, it's memorable. <laughs> what I was, what I was telling Lynn earlier is, it's almost as if uh, they saw ad compliance in front of them, went completely around it, and then looped back to where they were. And just like somehow bypassed all of it, but still are falling underneath that umbrella. What is, what is they, that cactus? So creative with it. Yeah. It's. I wonder if this is a good use for like ChatGPT. Like, okay, here's my product. Go through all of Facebook ad compliance and come up with ten ad ideas that's not going to, you know, fall within the compliance issues. Oh my gosh. So they're going through hooks, pain points. Here's your, like. The names of their products too, along with the brand name are funny, just like flasher nude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, they know everybody's problem aware, right? Everybody's got hair somewhere. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And they're using pain point language. Like they, they were talking about a C-section scar. They were yeah. talking about like mm -hmm. tweezing hair off your boobs. Like that's a thing. Like they, 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 they talk about all of the things that yeah. people go, Oh, I've never heard anybody talk about this aloud. I thought it was just me, which makes but you trust them. And they show you all very the good things. visually too, though, of creating mm -hmm. the scroll stopper, like, mm -hmm. Somebody shaving to their toes. <laughs> like nobody talks about that. Nobody shows it. Right. And they're like, yeah, except we do. Like, right. here's, which here's makes them trust like, They get to, it to see in your feed. Mm -hmm. I'm 60, but with this, I look like I'm 30. Yeah, you know, this is. They have a similar challenge of not being able to show how it works or like what yep. the immediate outcome is but they do a really clever job of you know show d demonstrating these things visually yep by using these like yeah but the other thing i'm seeing is like they've got product demo they've got unboxing this is all the ugc style their captions one aren't video. created uh, you know in instagram or something but they have that effect yeah mm -hmm. so they're videos you're using native footage but it, i don't know they're just hitting a good mix mm -hmm. of everything yep i'd be curious to see how things are performing like they, they, they create a community and like with the, with the noodlers i think is what they call their their customers <laughs> something very different in oklahoma it wouldn't be nudist <laughs> go catch a catfish with catfish. your hands I'm noodling <laughs> all right. What does the page your... look? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's just find one of these. Happy Daniel's doing this and get retargeted. Yeah. <laughs> I have to answer a lot of a, a lot of questions later. Um, so this is the shaving okay. lander. If you look at the URL. Yep. See that ah, indicate they're trying to social proof right better up. Better than shaving. Yeah. So I'll just say like one thing I like about this is this hand is not prominent at all, but the fact that it's there shows like the uh, scale of the product. Oh, I feel mm -hmm. like this would be a very easy product to just throw a picture up against, you know, like an orange background or whatever, but that actually looks pretty consistent to. It's actually a pretty big device. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Like if you yeah, look, at, ask if you look at this, yeah. like that's that's about the same same size that you're seeing. So that's nice to see. That's like really consistent. I guess I could have just shown you this picture next instead. Nudist. Yep. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. They bear it all. They lean heavily into that. Before and after. We didn't yeah. see much before and after in in Facebook, which I know they frown upon. 
if you like getting into the weeds. But that's good. They're getting into skin types, hair types. Right. Answering all of these, the questions and objections up front. Talk about the time commitment, 10 minute treatments, five to 10 minutes, 10 to 20. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can make an informed decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk here about sensitivity. Comparing Price comparison. The cost of other, yeah, that's great. There's the guarantee. FDA cleared. Yeah. And see, like other brands would have leaned into that. Like, oh, it's like, you know, the whole like beauty aesthetic thing of like how beautiful the device is and it's FDA cleared. And, you know, they could have gone the medical, hard medical device route and they didn't. They went more, you know, fun, UGC, honest, authentic. Yeah. yeah. So here's their homepage. So they do have some LTV increasing add-ons. Yeah, and there's like a monthly, like you can buy like their like a cream or something or like a lotion for yeah before and after. So then there's like a bit more. This this is almost the exact same layout as their uh, product page. Once you get down here, it's like you get a little sample of the product page. Then you get a see more button. It's not bad. That's cool. So what I'd be curious about is. Are we going to see a different page with a different hook? Is hair removal. Uh, they have longer copy. It looks like. Mm -hmm. That's the same one. Mm -hmm. Is there a waxing? Maybe that that's a tweezing. Tweezing. The maybe. cactus. Yeah. The cactus one. Yeah. Same so one. Interesting. Do you think that's on purpose? Do you think it uh, must be working? Is, the, well is this is the answer to your or the solution to your problem? Well, let's see. Click shop now. Goes there. I mean, they have such a good a variety. Car, this is what I was curious about is mm -hmm. how hard do they hit upsells? Oh, yeah, it goes and through. It, like, and if that's the reason thing. all everything goes to just, you know, the base package or whatever you want to call it. And then it's like, let's upsell you. Complete the kit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Subscription. I'm going to get so many ads. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of a lot of ads and a whole variety so yeah if you go to like if you look at these kits those are the products they're trying to upsell you mm -hmm. so i wonder what their time to purchase is because it's not so inexpensive that you can just purchase it like on a most i would think most people can't purchase it on a whim um, right. how much is it uh it's like 189 for, okay. yeah their base then you get 40 percent off somehow mm -hmm. Their full package is under 300, which is still cheaper than like other, some other ones I've seen that are like three to 600. But if you uh, flash now, pay the, later, <laughs> you do the 40% off, that's off this kit. I mean, that's a pretty solid mm -hmm. discount. We're soon, only 10 left. Only 10 left, guys. Dang, I'll buy one and see if that goes down. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a good question, Len. I, I, I bet they probably have a really long buying cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I, I asked that because, you know, when we have targeted landing pages, they work really well with impulse buys. Like, we want to give them, you know, I mean, they work well overall but they work especially well when it's impulse buy we want to really hit them with you know targeted language and targeted you know benefits testimonials all that kind of stuff faqs so that they buy now but if this is a long cycle and somebody is going to be hit i'm using so much verbal sorry kinesthetic language somebody is going to see multiple hooks and see these ads for a good period of time it may not may not be worth it 
Um, they may have yeah. found that this page just works best no matter the hook. I'd probably want to create some like retargeting ads that just show the pain of waxing and shaving just constantly. Are you still waxing? Are, are you sure you yeah. want to do another month of this? So yeah. It's been eight weeks. You could have been, been free of hair by now. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That might be too personal. Like, with revealing <laughs> that, you know, the targeting cookies, but. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, one specifically to, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. well, I think these are pretty, these are pretty good fun ones. Good pulls. Agreed. Yeah. Well, we're at an hour now. So any final yeah. thoughts? The same as what I said last time, be brave <laughs> and you're creative. Um, <coughs> you know, what we've learned from these brands is, you know, don't be afraid to be authentic. Don't be afraid to, to have fun. Um, you know, people are looking for authenticity. People are also looking for information. So don't hold back the information that people are asking. If you don't know what your customers are asking, what their objections are, find them out and put them in like your product pages and in your ads. Yeah. I think for me, while you should lean into what is working, um, you know, look at, uh, Boom Boom, for example, like they lean heavily into the man on the street sort of UGC. Um, kind of to Lynn's point as well, like you can't be afraid of shying away from that a little bit and testing the waters with other stuff too, because you know, you're you're really limiting yourself by only doing one type of ad creative. And I mean, that's obviously a much deeper conversation we could get into, but that's a very succinct way to put it. Um, and then the other thing that I would say is make sure you're identifying inconsistencies between ads and landing pages. Um, so there's not, you know, some sort of switch that gets flipped between somebody clicking your ad and getting to a landing page that turns them off one way or another. Mm -hmm. and I'd say this is a really good, I think uh, process for everybody to go through with their brand on a consistent basis to really think through the customer journey and for each of your different personas and how you could, make that journey have even less friction and smoother and don't, it's not so much the journey you want them to be on. It's the journey they're likely to be on and to make sure that they have everything they need for these different life parts of their life cycle. Right. Cool. Well, thank you. I imagine we'll do more of these in the future. I had a lot of fun. I'm sure it's gonna be terrible and audio only podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, oh. yeah, if, if you want to see the whole thing, head over to Tier 11's YouTube channel to see all the things we were talking about or go check out the ad library yourself for Vitruvian, Boom Boom, and Nude. And if you're looking for a agency partner to help you think through your whole funnel, uh, head over to tier11.com and we'd love to chat with you and see how we can help reduce the friction in your customer's journey. Until next time, I'm Tom Meredith. Thank you very much, Lynn and Daniel. Yeah. Thanks. See ya. Always fun. See ya.